In 1920, a German chemist called Hermann Staudinger sparked uproar when he proposed that high molecular weight molecules, which he called macromolecules, could be formed in a polymerization reaction by joining many small molecules called monomers together. Over the past 100 years, polymer science has developed so much that it's almost impossible to think of anything we use daily that's not formed from or has been produced using polymers. From the polyethylene used in bulletproof vests to the polystyrene balls used for packaging, polymers are everywhere. And polymers aren't just man-made, they're also abundant in nature. DNA and proteins are both examples of natural polymers, as they're both formed of many nucleic acids or amino acids, which are considered as the monomer unit. One interesting recent development in polymer chemistry is the use of polymers in nanomedicine for drug delivery, especially in the treatment of cancer. Current chemotherapy treatment for cancer still faces the issue of lack of selectivity of anti-cancer drugs towards tumour cells, resulting in the death of rapidly dividing healthy cells, such as cells in the bone marrow and gastrointestinal tract. Due to high required dosages of anti-cancer drugs for efficient treatment, this effect on healthy cells can be drastic, causing awful side effects. The recent development of polymeric missiles in the delivery of anti-cancer drugs can tackle this issue. Polymeric missiles consist of two main parts, a hydrophobic core which holds the poorly water-soluble drug and a hydrophilic shell which allows the drug to be soluble in the blood and prevents detection of the drug by the immune system. These favourable properties are achieved by using block copolymers to form polymeric missiles. Block copolymers are formed by combining two or more different monomers in a single polymerization to produce one polymer with precisely defined segments of each monomer. This allows the polymer to have different functionalities in different sections, which in the case of polymeric missiles means the polymer is amphiphilic. This means it has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic sections. So how do polymeric missiles directly target tumour cells? The basis for the effectiveness of polymeric missiles as drug carriers is the enhanced permeability and retention effect, which is observed in almost all human cancers, with the exception of a few, such as prostate cancer and pancreatic cancer. Tumours are formed due to mutations which cause cells to divide rapidly. As a result, increased blood supply is required for the tumour to grow. Newly formed blood vessels surrounding the tumour have larger gaps between their endothelial cells than regular blood vessels. This means there is an enhanced uptake of polymeric missiles from tumour blood vessels as they can fit through the holes. On reaching the target site, polymeric missiles enter tumour cells via fluid state endocytosis. It's vital that polymeric missiles are both biocompatible and biodegradable. However, it's also important that they're not excreted before the drug they encapsulate has been released. This is crucial for the treatment to be effective and is also important due to the high production costs of the drug. Biodegradability is achieved by carefully managing the molecular weights of the polymeric missiles and the copolymers from which they're formed. Molecules with a molecular weight greater than 70,000 grams per mole can be filtered out of the blood in a process called glomerular filtration and excreted in the urine. Therefore, polymeric missiles are made so that their total molecular weight is of magnitude 10 to the power of 6 and consequently they remain in the bloodstream. However, once the drug has been released at the desired site, the polymeric missiles degrade to form many smaller block copolymers, which have a molecular weight of less than 70,000 gram per mole, which can then be excreted in the urine. Molecular weights of polymers are given as averages, as it's virtually impossible to produce synthetic polymers in which all the polymer chains are the same length. There are two main ways of reporting the average weight of a polymer. One method is simply to give the mean by adding all the weights of the individual polymer chains together and dividing by the total number of polymer chains. The other method is called the weighted mean and is calculated by dividing the sum of the squared masses of the polymer chains by the sum of the polymer masses. These two values can then be used to calculate dispersity of a polymer, which shows how wide our range of polymer masses is. So now that we know how polymeric missiles are used for the treatment of cancer, how are they formed? As mentioned before, polymeric missiles are formed from block copolymers. 
There are many different types of polymeric missiles which encapsulate a variety of anti-cancer drugs. One in particular is doxorubicin, which is used to treat a range of cancers, including certain types of breast, lung and stomach cancer. Doxorubicin is held in polymeric missiles formed from an ABA tri-block copolymer, which consists of two types of polymer called polyethylene oxide and polypropylene oxide. The name of this copolymer can be abbreviated in the following way, where B stands for block. Polyethylene oxide and polypropylene oxide are both formed in anionic ring opening polymerizations. These are a class of chain growth polymerizations in which each monomer in turn is added one by one to the growing polymer chain. Polyethylene oxide, also commonly known as polyethylene glycol in medical applications, is a crystalline polymer which is formed via an anionic ring opening polymerization. A nucleophile initiator is used in the presence of an alkaline catalyst to open the epoxide ring, leaving a negatively charged oxygen at the end of the chain. In the propagation step, more ethylene oxide monomer is added to the growing polymer chain. Polyethylene oxide is hydrophilic, so forms the outer shell of the polymeric missile. A similar mechanism takes place in the formation of polypropylene oxide. However, due to the additional CH3 group, the propyl oxide monomer has two stereoisomers. A racemic mixture of the monomer is used, which means there's a 50-50 mix of each stereoisomer. As a result, the polymer formed has an atactic structure, which means that the orientation of the methyl groups is random. Polypropylene oxide is hydrophobic, so forms the inner core of the polymeric missile. This is the mechanism for the polymerization of polypropylene oxide. Polypropyl oxide is also flexible as it has a low glass transition temperature of minus 70 degrees Celsius. A key property of polymers is that they can exist in two different forms depending on temperature, known as the glass state and rubber state. The glass transition temperature of a polymer is the temperature at which the transition from glass to rubber state occurs. Below the glass transition temperature, polymers are hard and rigid, whereas above the glass transition temperature, polymers are soft and flexible as the polymer chains are able to slide over each other. The polymerizations of ethylene oxide and propylene oxide are known as living polymerizations because there's no termination stage. The end of the polymer chain is considered living because it will continue to react until there's no monomer left. There's still lots of research going into the use of polymers in drug delivery systems. For example, polymeric missiles are not only being researched for the treatment of cancer. One recently published journal discussed the use of polymeric missiles to treat rheumatoid arthritis for which there's currently no cure. Another recent development in the use of polymers in medicine is the formation of photoresponsive tuberosomes from cyclic peptide bridged amphiphilic block copolymers. Photoresponsive tuberosomes are cylindrical polymeric missiles which disassemble when irradiated by UV light. Using photoresponsive tuberosomes as drug carriers is another method which could be used to improve the selectivity and localization of chosen drugs. Over the past few decades, scientists have made huge steps forwards in the improvement of drug delivery, and hopefully progress will continue to be made in the future years to bring these new methods into clinical practice and reduce the number of deaths from a range of diseases.